Traveling the globe, extreme fisherman Jakob Wagner risks his life <laughs> to uncover freshwater beasts of legend. But are the biggest river giants still out there? They are so extremely rare. If you want to catch a big fish, you need to suffer. Now, to bring in a Goliath catfish over twice his size, Grande Lechero. Jakob has to conquer the elements and survive the Amazon. Fish on, fish on, fish on! Is this legendary titan too big to handle? Vamos! Go, 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 go! There's only one way for Jakob to find out. I'm totally exhausted. Battling the fish of a lifetime. The monster Piraiba. February 23rd, 9 a.m. The Amazon rainforest, Peru. It's day one of a 10-day expedition into some of the world's most isolated waters. As an extreme sports fisherman, conservationist, and seasoned explorer, Jakob Wagner has fished South America's most remote regions before, landing mammoth fish. But his newest challenge will test the limits of his strength and endurance, taking on one of the most powerful beasts to rule any river, anywhere. My mission on this trip is to catch one of the biggest freshwater fish on our planet, giant catfish, Piraiba. Sometimes called the Goliath catfish, the Piraiba dominates the Amazon with its sheer size. But in an ecosystem under intense pressure from overfishing, how big is the biggest Goliath hunting these waters? Jakob is determined to find out. Joining forces with experienced local guide Boya, limited to the food and fuel he can carry on the boat, he's going as deep into the untamed jungle as he dares. Around the world, catfish are legendary. From this record-shattering 646-pound Mekong Whopper to a tiny blood-sucking catfish that can infest the human body, these tenacious hunters are known for their ravenous appetites. And one of the most ravenous is the Piraiba catfish. Piraiba can eat really anything. Dead monkeys, live monkeys, fish, other catfish. It's up to them because they are so strong and so powerful that they just take whatever they want. In the muddy waters of the Amazon, Piraiba are unstoppable eating machines. These determined hunters use long whiskers, called barbels, to navigate their environment. These barbels contain taste buds that allow them to sense their surroundings and detect prey. They have long whiskers, and when the whisker touch the prey, bang, that's it. Piraiba continue to grow their entire lives, reaching mammoth size. The official record catch for Piraiba is a massive 341 pounds, but they're known to get much bigger, up to 440 pounds and 12 feet long. If you want to catch Piraiba, you have to suffer, you have to try as hard as you can. I have only a few days to catch this fish, and it's the legend of the Amazon. Jakob has just 10 days to find a whopper. Any delay could cost him his flight out, leaving him stranded for days. But a 10-day expedition may not be enough. Surveying the river, Jakob discovers a serious problem, unusually low water levels. On the hunt for Piraiba catfish, finding deep water is critical to success. The best season for Piraiba fishing is the rainy season, especially in the end of rainy season, when the water is really high. Piraiba are so huge, they hunt at depth to ambush the biggest prey. With the river at an unexpected low, Jakob's quest may be destined to fail. The question is if Piraiba is here right now, because the water is really low, and when we get more rain, the Piraiba should start migrating from downstream to these places. That's what I hope. 
9 a.m., expedition day two of 10. In search of deeper water, Jakob and Boya head up a narrow passage, making their way to another tributary. But soon, the jungle closes in. Crushing heat and humidity present more than a physical challenge. Under the cover of jungle trees, a tiny menace carries deadly diseases. Mosquitoes. Thousands of mosquitoes. Let's destroy myself. Woo! Ah! Ah! Okay. Poquito más, poquito más. Finally clear of the mosquito-ridden jungle, Jakob and Boya travel 30 miles further downriver, seeking deep water and signs of Goliath catfish. 5 p.m. Though conditions here are only slightly better than those upriver, Jakob is determined. He has no idea where, or if, he'll encounter a freshwater giant. Going after a heavyweight champion of the Amazon, Jakob uses gear designed for marine sport fishing. Serious fishing gear. People normally use these ones for big game fishing for marlins or tuna. We are going to use them for Puraiba. A special drag system keeps tension on the line, wearing the fish out as it pulls hard against the gears. This is the right size hook for Puraiba. I could catch a shark with that. Only a high-tech rod and strong fishing line can withstand the shock of hooking a 400 plus pound catfish. But Jakob isn't here for a trophy. He plans to let his coveted catch go. Catch and release is really important because if everybody would kill the fish, then in the next 50 years, the fish are gone. And of course, I'm trying to catch all these big freshwater giants. They are extremely rare. So I prefer to release the fish so they can spawn again and as well other fishermen can catch them again. It's really important. Heavy tackle's difficult to cast accurately. Now Jakob must rely on his guide, Boya, to paddle the bait toward deeper pools. A little bit left. Where pure Aiba loved to hunt. Yes, it's a beautiful place. We are in the curve of the river, and here is a very deep pool with six, seven meters in the middle, and that's the place for Kuraba. At least I hope so. Okay. <sighs> then, something lurking in the muddy water puts Jakob's plans in jeopardy. Meat eating fish, locals call them kandiru. This is my major problem when I fish this river. But this one was trying to eat my bait and got foul hooked. But there's another tiny species of Kandiru that preys on massive Piraiba. Known as the vampire fish, these small Kandiru are parasites with a taste for blood. Like tiny leeches, they swim into a fish's gills and gorge themselves. The Kandiru find their host by following a chemical trail excreted from the gills. But now, larger flesh-eating Kandiru may destroy Jakob's chances of landing a legendary Goliath catfish. Now I have so many problems with Kandirus. My bait is totally eaten. Thanks to thieving Kandiru fish, Jakob is fresh out of bait. To catch a piraiba, he needs to restock his supply. Ah. 
I have to find worms to catch bait fish with. And the best place to find worms is around palm trees and banana trees because they hold a lot of water. And where you have water, you can find as well a lot of worms. Ah, there's one. Ah, two. One more. Good. Back on the water, Jakob hopes his earthworms do the trick. Okay, let's get some bait fish now. It's a test of an extreme angler's skill, finding the perfect bait to attract an elusive mega predator. Oh, fish on, fish on. Bolo. Look at these whiskers. Longer than the fish. But this fish, this bait fish is too small for Peter Iba. Send me Mota. Jakob has a target bait fish in mind. Another Amazon catfish called the Mota. A plump, perfect sized Piraiba lure. This is a bigger fish. I hope it's a Mota. Yes, Mota, 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 Mota. I got you. Beautiful fish. Beautiful fish and very good size. It's a big fish around four pounds. Excellent, I got my big one. It's Mota, a catfish species, and it's a very good bait for big Piraiba. Let's go Piraiba fishing. His bait replenished, Jakob pushes further down the river. Back on the hunt for one of Earth's most powerful predators the Goliath Amazon catfish. <laughs> 1 p.m., expedition day three of 10. Extreme angler and world explorer, Jakob Wagner, continues his quest for a monster Piraiba, heading deeper into the rainforest. Piraiba are some of the most elusive river beasts Jakob has ever faced. They migrate a lot and one day they can be here and uh, one week later they can be somewhere else. Piraiba are known to inhabit deep, fast-moving waters throughout the Amazon, Orinoco and Isakibo rivers. But in the Amazon's twists and turns, locating one is a formidable task. Believed to travel many hundreds of miles to spawn, their migratory routes are still under research. Finding a monster-sized Piraiba may be impossible. Arriving at a promising spot, Jakob prepares his tent right on the boat. Piraiba hunt at night, so Jakob needs to stay ready at all times. This is a new fishing spot. Looks good. It's a deep pool with whirlpools and very strong current. Now I hope this can be a lucky spot for me. Jakob keeps watch into the night. The river is too low. It's not good for Piraba fishing at all. Three nights pass without a strike. It's frustrating after so many nights without no take. Again night, and one more night, and one more night. I'm sitting here in the boat, work so hard, try to change the bait every hour. I don't know. I need a little bit more luck. Expedition day six of 10. Jakob's time on the Amazon is running out. To learn more about the Piraiba population, 
he decides to meet a local fisherman, Jorge, who also hunts the monster fish for survival. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Yaku. Ciao. Piraiba, known here as Lechero, are under threat by human development and overfishing. In the heart of the Amazon, Jorge's lucky to catch even a few each year to help provide food for his family. Still, Jakob hopes he'll have good news about the river beast's numbers. Jorge, puedo encontrar grandes lecheros. Sí, todavía podemos encontrar bastante aquí. Si sí, hay bastante más, más hondo, hay más grandes lecheros. Sí, Vamos es, para es el bueno. lechero. Heading out with Jorge, Jakob wants to see firsthand how locals hunt the mammoth catfish. Jorge picks a spot and steers his boat into the trees. His chosen fishing method, long lining. Jorge's one man with about seven hooks, but long lining also occurs on a much larger scale. Before Pira Ibo were overfished, Outfits like Jorge's would have had little impact on the overall population. Now that Piraiba numbers are declining, the effects are more significant. Long lines are quite common in the Amazon, but I prefer to catch a fish with rod and line because I do catch and release. You know, this, this harm a fish a lot, but they, they catch a fish because they are hungry. They want, they want to eat it. Jorge uses a common local bait fish called Boca Chico. Uh-huh. Yeah. Otro boca chico. Otro boca chico. He's yes, using yeah. long line, I would yeah. say around 40 yeah. feet long, with yeah. six, seven hooks. Yeah. And he's Listo. using like bait, yeah. boca chico. And what's good to know, this fish migrate exactly like piraiba. So when this fish around is around, piraiba should be here as well. This is serious business. It looks more like an anchor. Okay. Yeah. The line of baited hooks stretches out into the river. Now we have six, seven hooks in the water. Okay, and I have, I have to drop this sack of stones. Okay. The baited lines remain in the water overnight. The next morning, on day seven of Jakob's expedition, the Piraiba continues to elude him. Nada. Nada? Nada. 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 Nothing. Nada. Yeah, even the local method failed. Leaves, leaves, leaves. As Jorge's effort comes up short, it seems that pressure on Amazon fish populations may have already done its damage. With no Piraiba in sight, and only two and a half days left on the Amazon, Jakob fears the worst. Do monster Piraiba still prowl the Amazon? To find out, Jakob returns to his previous strategy, night fishing. 10 p.m., after hours of vigilant watch, Jakob has a bite. The reel screams as the catch tears off. Pulling hard, scanning the water to see what's hooked, Jakob struggles to slow the fish. The current is strong, and the river is full of submerged trees. Perfect shelter for a fighting fish trying to break free. Jakob struggles as hard as he can, maintaining tension on the line to keep the fish from shaking the hook. They fight really hard. But the fish is pulling even harder. And Jakob fears he could lose the catch of a lifetime. It's coming, it's coming. I need to take my glove because they have really powerful jaws. Okay, guy. It's not the Goliath Piraiba he was hoping for. 
but it is another killer catfish, known for an insatiable appetite. Ah, beautiful red tail catfish, amazing. This one is probably around 40 pounds. Yeah, beautiful. Ah. They fight real hard. You can hear them hunting in the night on the surface. Like, like wild horses. Ah. The hefty specimen ah. offers clues how other Amazon catfish, including the supersized Piraiba, get so big. Red-tailed catfish is extremely aggressive species and they don't use eyes too much for hunting. They have long whiskers and they try to find the prey on the bottom or close to the surface and they suck it in. When I brush my fingers over its teeth, it's exactly like sandpaper. Most of the catfish in the Amazon uh, have teeth like this. Hunting in near total darkness, Amazon catfish are true stealth predators. Inhaling fish into their gaping mouths, biting down with row upon row of gripping teeth, catfish prey have little hope of escape. It's not a puriba, but I'm extremely happy about this catch. After so many nights without a single take, finally I have my first Amazon catfish. Let's release it. Thank you very much. See you next time. And send me a Puriba, please. Eight AM, expedition day eight of 10. In an effort to break his Piraiba losing streak, Jakob seizes a rare chance to recharge. After days of eating nothing but dry goods, he joins two Amazonian Indians, Namo and Ginto, on a traditional bird hunt. For Jakob, it's a chance to observe how indigenous people survive in the wild. Using the rainforest's own deadly weapons, they carve blowguns from wood and fire darts tipped with a potent neurotoxin, curare. Namo and Ginto lead Jakob to a prime spot where many jungle birds come to feed. We are stopping here to listen to sound of the forest and identify the animals. It's a bird. We got one. Common in the South American rainforest, this bird, called Nawame by the native people, is known elsewhere as a gray winged trumpeter. Now you. Yum yum. See? See? I think we are going to roast it tonight. We will have a party. After a long day of hunting, this is well deserved. Knowing he'll soon face a long night on the river, Jakob fills up on protein. Tonight could be his last chance to land a monster Piraiba. Beautiful night with full moon. There are a lot of stories about fishing at full moon and most of fishermen say that it's better stay in the bed. But I think you have chance to catch a fish when you are in the boat and not in the bed. So I prefer to stay in the boat. I will have to check the bait every hour until the morning. No sleep at all. Yeah, next horrible night. 4 a.m. Just before dawn on the ninth day of his 10-day expedition, Jakob's patience may finally pay off. I was in the tent and I heard... 
I ran, set the hook, and the fish was on. It's difficult to say what's that fish, but it's a good size. Concealed in darkness, Jakob's hooked beast continues to pull hard. Could this be the Goliath Amazon Pure Eva? After fishing day and night for a monster Pure Eva catfish, extreme sports fisherman Jakob Wagner has a strike. It's a small Pure Small Pure Woo! Yes! When I saw the fish for the first time on the surface, I was extremely happy because it's Piraiba. It's, it's the moment. I was really happy. Even it wasn't a monster, it was fish around 50, 55 pounds, but still it's a Piraiba. I have to try to grab the fish close to the tail. Yeah. And now pull it. Uh, the current is extremely strong here. Uh, uh. Yes! Woo. Puraiba! Finally! I got one. It's not a monster, but still beautiful fish. Ah, beautiful, beautiful Puraiba. I would say around 50 55 pounds. Yeah, oh, I'm very happy, very happy about this fish. The 55 pound catfish refuels Jakob's hopes. But this Pure Eba is only a juvenile, not the Goliath Jakob is after. The most common name for this fish is Piraiba in English, but we know as well other names like Lau Lau, Kuma Kuma, Lechero, or here they call them Bagre Blanco, it means white catfish. Thank you very much and send me your grandmother. Bye. I had to work so hard and it's not a monster but it's Piraiba. That's it. Better something than nothing. I'm not going to give up. I have to try again, try again and try again. That's the only chance how I can get my Piraiba. 11 a.m. It's the second to last day of Jakob's mission. Encouraged by the juvenile, he refuses to quit. Convinced there's a Piraiba in even deeper water, he pushes further downriver and farther off the grid. The water is just too low and they are somewhere far downstream, so I have to go there as well and try to find them. After two hours, the river begins to narrow. Then, as it widens and turns, a sudden encounter puts Jakob on guard. Oh. vibration startle schools of Boca Chico. The stressed fish launch themselves out of the water, interpreting the commotion as a threat from dangerous predators. For Yaka, it's a sign his luck may be improving. This is the best way out to get Boca Chico. Now we have enough bait fish for tonight. It's very good to see so many Boca Chico here because they migrate like driver. <laughs> And when we have so many of them around, Grima is definitely here as well. Ow! <laughs> ah. I think we have enough bait for tonight. Easy. Easy fishing. Boat fishing. Boat fishing for Boca Chico.
As the expedition's last day approaches, night falls on the rainforest. A storm is brewing. It could be Jakob's best and last chance. The river is really low. It's not good for piraba fishing at all. I hope that this storm can bring some more water. Otherwise, I have no chance to catch a piraba. Yes, that's exactly what I need. Yes, that's what I need. Rain, rain, rain. More, please, more. More. Jakob hopes the rain will bring enough water to bring him the most gigantic piraiba of all. If I wait here, I have a chance to catch one, hopefully. Hours go by. The storm intensifies. I have to stay here and wait for the water rise enough. Yeah. I have to suffer. <laughs> This rhythm of pounding rain is suddenly broken. My reel started screaming like crazy. So I tried to set the hook. It was still running, still running, still going, still going, still going. In the darkness, there's no way to tell what's on the end of Jakob's line, but he knows. It's something big. Lois! I don't know what is it. What's going on? Two a.m. on the tenth and final day of his Piraiba expedition, Jakob Wagner's line screams out. With eight hundred feet already gone, Jakob could run out of line, and his catch. Could break free. It's still going. Jakob is powerless to stop the run. Then, oh. his worst fear comes true. The catch is lost. I don't know what happened, but it's free. Uh, yeah, it took at least 300 meters of line. Yes, my line broke off in the end. Was it a record-setting piraiba? Jakob will never know. As he faces the final hours of his quest, failure is not an option. It's seven o'clock in the morning, and it's bloody hot. It's frustrating. I work so hard. I don't sleep at all. But I'm not going to give up. I will get my kuriba. Jakob's expedition is nearly over. He must meet the charter plane on schedule, or risk being stranded. The pressure is on. Then, out in the murky water. Something huge gives a tug so strong. Help! Help! Jakob's reel starts spinning in a blur. Fish on! Fish on! Fish on! Fish on! I just heard. <laughs> I set the hook. It runs, runs, runs. Go! 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 Boya, my friend, go, has go, to help go, me go, with go. the engine. Vamos! He goes backwards, backwards, backwards. And that's the moment when I can lose the fish. So I had to, I had to reel in really oh. fast. But I'm lucky; I didn't lose the fish. Vamos, 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 vamos! The fight with Piraiba, it's like hooking into a train. Uh. Okay, stop, stop, stop! Uh, that's a monster. That's a monster fish. I couldn't stop the fish at all. Ah. Ah. It 
it's everything or nothing because my drag is totally tightened and the line it can break any time. I stop the fish, but this monster still pulls me at least two miles down the river. It's a huge risk that the line will break. It has to be a monster. There are so many submerged trees and when the fish gets gets into the tree that's that's the end of the fight. That's it, that's game over. No oh, baby, stop! My rod is totally bent over. This has to be a monster fish. Amazon river species are so diverse, Jakob has no idea what he's hooked. Searching the muddy water, he fights to reel it close enough for a look. I'm hoping it's a Kuraiba, but in the middle of the Amazon, you never know what can happen. I'm totally exhausted. I'm totally, I'm totally exhausted. Ah. 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 Yeah, it's on the surface. It's on the surface. I saw the monster for the first time on the surface and it was one of my most incredible fishing moments in my life. But one small mistake and the fish is gone forever. Ah, it's coming up! When the fish finally surfaced, I knew it's going to be a huge fish, but this was just too much. It was it was incredible. Woo! I have to grab my glove. The tree is really close. Hold the rod, hold the rod. Adrenaline, you know, it's shaking with my body. I don't know what to do. It's, it's, ah, it's too big. I try to lip it with my hands and the jaws are so powerful. Oh, uh, this is a monster. This is a monster. You never know, the hook can get so easy into your hand. Uh, uh, I have to be very careful. Where is the hook? I have to be really very careful. Uh, 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 I grab it. Oh no. Ah. Uh, my glove. Give me my glove. I go for it. I have my glass. When I have something so huge on the line, my body is shaking, 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 and I don't want to make a mistake because one small mistake and that's the end. I ask myself, okay, and now, how I'm going to get this monster into the boat? After crushing near misses and a daunting 10-day trek deep into the Amazon rainforest, explorer and extreme fisherman Jakob Wagner is face to face with a whopper piraiba. But is it the Goliath catfish of his career? No. To find out, Jakob must risk losing his catch. There is no time for thinking. I have to do it right now because I can lose the fish. So I have to grab the fish, lip the fish, and pull the fish into a boat. In the strong current, his guide Boya must stay at the helm. Jakob is on his own. Yes! 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 Now I was screaming like like crazy because uh, I know this fish is going to be the catch of my lifetime. Oh, it hurts so much. 
sorry, I can talk. I can talk. This is just, this is just too incredible. His battle won. Jakob takes a few moments to enjoy his conquest. <laughs> this is the real monster, real giant of the Amazon. This is the king. Look at this head. The head is three times, four times bigger than my head. I really don't understand how I was able to pull this fish into the boat alone. Fish which is four or five times heavier than me, but probably I had so much of adrenaline in my blood that I did it. I did it and now I have my Piraiba. <laughs> Incredible! Incredible, boy! <laughs> Monster! With precious minutes to get the Piraiba back in the water, that's incredible! Jakob races to shore, signaling his victory to the crew. Pushing water through the Piraiba's gills, Jakob can take time Let's to measure, measure the enormous fish. Keep it straight, Boya. Okay? Okay, one under four. It means eight feet, eight inches. Woo! That's massive fish. Now let's measure the girth. The girth is five feet and three inches. That's the dinosaur of the Amazon River. Based on the giant Piraiba's length and girth, Jakob calculates its weight, an astounding 475 pounds, 130 pounds heavier than the standing world record. Uh, 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 okay, let's pull it to the deep water. Uh. close to the shore. There are a lot of kangaroo catfish and they can get into the gills. Uh, watch the gills as well. And if I see kangaroo inside, I have to take it immediately away. Jakob thoroughly checks the Piraiba's gills to make sure they're clear. No, no mas, no mas, no more. While Jakob shoots photographs of his prized catch to share with experts around the world, the Piraiba reminds him of its power. Ah! Oh! She bites me. Piraiba hunt on the bottom. When they get close to the prey, they just suck it in because they have huge mouth and with so many teeth inside, no way, no way to escape. And they are nearly blind, so that's why they have to use these whiskers for hunting. Uno, dos, tres. In his lifelong quest to raise awareness of disappearing river behemoths and battle the world's biggest beasts in the flesh, Jakob's one Goliath closer to completing his ultimate mission, taking on the world's most incredible freshwater giants. What an amazing experience. Thank you. I leave you go. After all of this waiting, I finally got my Piraiba. 